everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and I've been very interested in this 360 degree video I keep seeing popping up all over the place, and especially now that we have uh, things like Google Cardboard, we can very easily consume that content in a way we couldn't before. And I wanted to see what cameras were out there uh, to be able to do that relatively easily. And I uh, went out and bought a Ricoh Theta S. This is about $350 on Amazon. And as you can see here, it's got uh, dual lenses on it, so you can take a picture and have it see uh, pretty much everything that is around it, as well as above and below it. So you just point it, uh, take a picture, and it picks up everything. It's really kind of neat. So you can see what the image looks like here when it comes out of the camera. Uh, just one big uh, flattened out globe here. But uh, when you load up their software, uh, you can start seeing uh, what this is all about. So you can scroll around the image here. You can see what a mess everything off camera is in the studio at the moment. We're going to be moving out of here shortly into a, a better spot back down in the basement. But you can see, though, uh, what this looks like. You can see up and down uh, all the way around. It is really, really cool. This is a still photo. You can do videos much in the same way and we'll be looking at some of that in a minute too. Uh, so a lot of neat potential here and the image quality is actually really nice on this too. Good dynamic range. What's also cool is if you have a mobile phone, which many of us do, and maybe a cheap pair of Google Cardboard, you can slide the phone into the Google Cardboard and then uh, look around a scene just by turning your head and it will respond to uh, all of your motion as you can see here. So you've got a lot of neat kind of VR potential. This is not a 3D camera, so you're not gonna get any real depth to it, but uh, you can you know, put on your pair of cardboard and just kind of look around at things in a different way, a very different way to uh, do just point and shoot photography, which I uh, thought was pretty cool. So let's take a look at the hardware and then we'll kind of get into some of the software, which unfortunately is its shortcoming at the moment. So a uh, pretty nice uh, lightweight handheld device. It's got eight gigabytes of onboard storage. It will, uh, the images take up about four or five megabytes a piece uh, because this is a dual 12 megapixel sensor. So each of these uh, cameras here, there really are two cameras on it, are uh, 12 megapixel sensors a piece. Uh, the 1080p video is limited to 25 minutes at a time. Uh, so you'll probably get, I would, I would say you probably get about an hour or so of video if nothing else on here. Uh, and if you mix in photos, of course, that will uh, vary a bit. But do the math on eight gigs uh, with, with about five megabytes per photo there, and you can get a feel for how many you can store. Uh, you can offload them onto your mobile phone when you're out in the field. And the reason you can do that is that there is built-in Wi-Fi on here. You just activate it uh, by pushing there. So you can move uh, files off of here onto your phone. It will download, at least on the iPhone, and I believe on the Google Android platform also, it'll download those images into your regular image store. So if you have like Apple Photos set up or Google Photos, it'll just send those flattened images up into the cloud and you can then uh, load up the software when you get back home and have it uh, process those on your computer. Again, we'll step through all that software in a minute. Uh, there's another button here to, to just toggle between uh, video and still photo mode here. So you just push that to go between each one and the shutter button is right there. And that's pretty much it. There isn't really any other controls to it because you don't really need to even point the camera at anything specifically because it will pick up everything uh, when you push the button there. On the bottom, there is a tripod mount, which is very useful because if you don't want to have your hand and arm in every photo, you probably want to mount this on something. And I suppose you could probably uh, mount it onto uh, just about anything that accepts a uh, tripod mount there. You have USB for charging and uh, for data storage. So far, I haven't had any real battery issues. I've charged it up once since I got it. I've been playing around with it all day today and really haven't seen a significant degradation in battery. So I think you'll get uh, pretty much what you'll see out of a normal point and shoot camera. Uh, there's also HDMI out on here. I couldn't get this to work with my video system just yet, uh, but there are some folks who've been streaming live 360 degree videos to Facebook with this. So there is some potential uh, with this to be able to do some really cool live events that would give people, uh, your viewers, an entire 360 degree experience. People can be watching different things off the same stream, which is really a very interesting concept that I want to explore a little bit more once it starts working with what I have here uh, in the studio. So there are some cool things you can do there, but that's it. This is it for the hardware. It is really uh, a simple device uh, with really decent image quality. What I want to do now though is kind of explore uh, just how some of this video stuff works as well as how the software works because that is the primary shortcoming of this right now. The software just isn't there for me just yet and it's going to be a little bit of a, an aggravation factor as you're playing with this camera uh, but I think they can improve that over time. But let's take a look and see exactly what some of those issues are. All right, so we're going to take a look at the desktop software first. This is going to run the same on Windows and on the Mac because this is written in Adobe Air. This is kind of a way for them to very quickly get it out to multiple platforms. But as a result, uh, the performance of the software isn't going to be as good as it could be. And it's really going to 
uh, get your computer working uh, very hard, especially when you have it loaded up looking at an image. It kind of just spins the fan for a while. Uh, what I am going to do though is grab this video that I shot here with the camera. So this was uh, my uh, dog walk earlier today. So this is what comes over from the camera when you uh, dump the files off of it onto your computer. You get this uh, spherical looking thing. Uh, we're going to take this and just drop it into the application here. And what it's going to do is uh, chew on that and spit out a file that we can uh, view both within the application but then also upload it into uh, Facebook and YouTube very easily. Now while that's processing, I do want to give a warning to Mac users. You are going to get a security warning when you install this software because uh, Rico never registered with Apple into their trusted developer program, so you will get a show-stopping stoppage of installation. You have to go into the control panel, into the security settings, and override that warning in order to get this software on there. So uh, bear that in mind and be prepared. Windows users do not go through that issue. Uh, but once the video is done processing, it will uh, display a version that you can scroll through here as we uh, just look at the uh, playback here. So you're not going to get like a really crisp 1080p video because uh, that original original, as you saw, was a 1080p video with two small circles on it. So the resolution isn't terrific. It's not as good as the photos look like, but uh, it is good enough for uh, this kind of thing where you can get a very quick and easy uh, three-dimensional, well, not three-dimensional, but 360-degree experience of uh, video, which I think is a very dynamic and cool way to experience video in a way we really couldn't before, especially with a device that uh, was affordable and within reach of consumers. It's also uh, pretty stable when you're walking around with it too. So I was impressed with uh, just the just doing the selfie mode here as we were walking down the street. Uh, really just a fascinating way to experience live video. Now what happens when it's doing that processing is it took that uh, two square thing that we had, two circle thing that we had before this uh, and made it into one big mishmash here. And uh, what I found to be very nice is that when I took this file and uploaded it to YouTube, we get this without any configuration or anything. So there you go. You've got the file on YouTube. It already knows that it's a 360 degree video file and you have the ability just to scroll around with it uh, with your mouse just like you did uh, with the file on the computer. But especially from the standpoint of sharing with friends, it's not hard to get them to see what you want them to see and experience that video the way that you experienced it with the software. And Facebook also works with this too. It doesn't work with the still images, unfortunately, but uh, both of these platforms recognize this format. And if I was on a, uh, you know, a, a mobile device running the YouTube app, I can slide it into my Google Cardboard and be able to uh, experience that video in 360 degrees uh, with the cardboard attached. So uh, just a really, uh, just awesome that we can do this now with not a lot of effort or programming or uh, you know, realigning video or anything like that. Just run it through that uh, lousy software and you get this really awesome result, which I thought was really, really cool. I do have uh, that video you just saw linked above so you can get a feel for uh, what it looks like. And as I play around with this a little bit more this weekend, I might throw a few more uh, videos onto that playlist. So that playlist linked above will have this review as well as some sample footage that I take with it. But now what I want to do is show you the mobile app uh, running on my iPhone, but the experience will be the same on Android. So let's take a look at that. So my phone is connected to the camera via its Wi-Fi, and I want to click on the Theta icon at the bottom here real quick so you can see uh, some of the remote camera controls. So the camera will stand up on its own, so you can set it up on a table or something, or of course, uh, plug a tripod into its tripod mount at the bottom. Uh, then you can hit the button here and start recording video. Uh, there isn't too many controls on the video side, but if you switch over to the photo side, you get a lot more. So we've got it uh, in its manual mode now. You can see we've got a preview image popping up here. I can switch over to uh, the auto mode and it'll give us a little bit of a better uh, quality image. And you have a lot of settings here for uh, getting the image exactly as you want it. So I can uh, do a basic exposure control here in auto or I can go uh, into some of the manual modes here. So for example, if I had a fast motion shot going Going on, I can set the uh Frame, you know, the shutter rate higher and the ISO higher as well to improve some of its sensitivity to catch something in motion better than I would if it was maybe just on auto. So there are some, uh, some pretty granular settings here that you can adjust on, on the camera to get uh, the image exactly the way you want it. I think auto is probably going to be fine for most folks, but you do have uh, some additional options there. Uh, the aperture is fixed, so you don't adjust the aperture, but you can kind of adjust it with the exposure, although you're not going to get a lot of depth of field, but a 360-degree camera is not a depth of field camera 
camera, it is a 360 degree camera that gives you, uh, you know, a little bit of a different experience than uh, traditional photography might uh, bring you. You also have some noise reduction settings and a few other things too that you can adjust too. So there's a bunch of things you can do to kind of tweak the image to get it exactly as you might want it there. Uh, so that can be helpful. Uh, there's also a way to get photos off the camera through the app, although it is a rather slow process. So I'm gonna show you an example here. We're gonna do uh, this 20 megabyte uh, file here, and it goes really slow even over Wi-Fi. So normally a 20 meg file on uh, Wi-Fi these days is really very quick. Uh, this is kind of a slow process. It kind of lags a little bit here and there. Uh, the worst part is, is that if I were to close the app, or my phone were to go to sleep, I'd have to start the process all over again. So if uh, it is not very forgiving, it doesn't have any background task here on the iPhone. So if I am not uh, out of this, if this screen is off, whether it, you know, the phone puts itself to sleep or anything, I got to start all over again, moving that file over. So you have to constantly keep your phone awake here while you're transferring files. So I, I do think that the uh, transfer to the computer via the USB cable is the best way to do it at the moment, just because the app uh, can be really aggravating when it gets over there. Uh, here's a video that we shot earlier, the same one that we had walking the dog. Uh, the problem here is that I cannot share the video via the mobile app only through uh, what we did earlier where we copied the file into their software, uh, did that conversion, and then uploaded it to uh, Facebook and YouTube. So they're uh, very limiting in how you can share uh, the videos, although you can share the still images through this. So I'm going to go to some images that I transferred already. Uh, maybe we'll pull up uh, one I shot out here in the backyard earlier. So a uh, really nice dynamic range here too. You can get a good idea as to uh, the capability of its image quality. I've got the sun uh, basically right in front of the camera here, yet we can still see detail on the dog quite well. Uh, and I have a really nice image out to the yard there with the sky too. So I thought that, again, they're really just nice image quality for what you're getting here. Uh, so I can share the image here. Now the sharing though is limited uh, to the Theta 360 website, which Rico runs. You have unlimited photo storage, only five megs a piece on the videos. And uh, there are some ways to share it with social media, but this is only going to share the link to the photo because at the moment, at least I haven't found any uh, service that supports 360 images. I need to do a little bit more research into that, but the big ones like like Facebook uh, and Google Photos don't appear to support that just yet. Uh, but I think you can use uh, Google Maps in their street view uh, as like a fan uploaded uh, image if you want to do that. Another thing to really be paying attention to is privacy settings. So uh, they have a public and unlisted option. And uh, what that applies to is just the Theta360 website. So if I uh, do an unlisted photo and then uh, send it out to my Facebook feed, I don't have an option at the moment for selecting who sees it on my Facebook feed. So my suggestion would be uh, keep everything unlisted and turn off the social media links and then share the link uh, with people that you want to see it. So unlisted on the Theta360 website just means that if someone has the link, they can get to it, but they won't see it uh, attached to your username or in a uh, search anywhere. So uh, just be careful because there's kind of two different uh, meanings here to the word unlisted, but I can uh, take this image here, uh, pop that up to uh, Theta360. It takes a minute or two uh, for it to get up there and then we can see it on their website. So that is the Rico Theta S. And this is a very fascinating product to me on so many levels, but primarily because it is affordable and very, very easy for consumers to pick up and use. You can take this thing out of the box, charge it, record a video, put it on your computer, and you can transmit that 360 degree experience to the world uh, pretty much in 20 minutes or less. It's that simple. And I think they have done a tremendous job with this hardware to make that very complex thing uh, within reach of consumers, both from a technical, but as well as a price standpoint. That's significant. Another significant thing is the convergence of all the other stuff around this. So the fact that YouTube and Facebook pretty much support this almost natively now, uh, where once that file gets uploaded, they know what to do with it. The fact that you can do things like cardboard to have a more immersive experience with those videos is also interesting to me. And again, these are all things that are very affordable, not only for the creator, but for the viewer too. And all of this stuff is just happening so quickly. And I think we're at the uh, very beginning stages of this, but products like this really uh, make it happen because we're now gonna see a lot of uh, creative people start experimenting with uh, ways to tell stories when uh, the viewer has the freedom to look around. And that's all stuff that we're going to be seeing a lot more of in the very near future. And I am very eager 
eager to be a part of it. I'm most eager to try out live streaming from this. I'm not going to do it in this video because I haven't figured it out yet. Uh, but once I do, we're going to try to do some 360 video uh, that you can watch in real time, perhaps with a Google Cardboard on also. And that's the kind of potential you have with this, especially given that you have the HDMI output on it too. So, so much more to come. It almost reminds me of the flip camera back in the day. And the flip camera was not nearly as good of a product as this is, but I think it's the same kind of thing where that handheld video experience became uh, very democratizing and now it's in everyone's phone and uh, everyone's doing it. I think this is a similar thing that we're going to start seeing more and more of this because the entry point now is so easy. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.